Hello Internet, I'm Guy. In a recent video, I made this scribing tool here out of brass and steel, and it has a collet in it that when it's tightened onto the uh, sewing needle in there, it makes a really nice tool, and it's, it's big in my hands. I have, I have large hands. Um, so uh, I decided to make an X-Acto knife holder as well. It uses the same idea, so um, I'll take the blade out so you can see it. Take the nut off there, and you can see it has a slit right there for the knife blade, and just screws right on. Very easy to make. Uh, I'm just going to detail how I made it so you can see it, if those of you who um, may want to just see how I, go, how I work. Um, I started with a very simple sketch, and this is all I needed to work from. So basic critical dimensions, like how deep the slit has to be for the X-Acto blade and tapers. This taper matches an internal taper that I don't show here that matches or is the drill that I use is a centering drill because it has a 30 degree taper. So let's jump right in. I'll give you a quick overview of how I made this. The first step is to create a 30 degree taper on the end of the 3 8 inch brass stock. This corresponds to the taper of the center drill. So now I'm relieving some uh, metal back there behind that tip to give it some room to move when the uh, nut compresses down on it. This is typical of, say, a Dremel uh, chuck. And here is the die that I'm going to be using. And I'm just checking to see if it'll fit over the end. And no, it doesn't. It's going to thread back over here on the right. And so I just need to clear this down a little bit more so it'll slide over there. And yeah, that works. So I'm just going to clean that up a little bit with a file. Some scotch bright, make it look shiny. And then I'm going to take a very shallow skim pass here um, on the 3 8 inch stock for the 3 8 inch by 18 die. There it is again. Putting it in my die holder. Getting the die started here, and yep, got that on there real quick. I'm using the motor to drive the die off, it just comes off a lot quicker. Getting it past that last bit there, and there we are, it's all nicely threaded. So I'm going to take that out and bump it out a little bit because now I'm going to knurl the 3 8 inch shaft there down where my fingers will be um, just above the nut. So I've got the knurling tool bringing it into place here. Yeah, that neural came out pretty darn nice, if I say so myself. So I'm just going to flip it around so I can detail the other end and do a little decoration on the, uh, the back end of the whole thing. It's a little hard pushing those neurals through the uh, collet there, but it works. Cleaning up that end, I'm going to do a little bit of decoration there that you don't see. But then I'm going to, uh, now you can see it, neural the whole end there. And now I'm just going to put a couple of decorative grooves here because decoration is something that is often missing from tools that we make for ourselves, but why not make it beautiful? Starting with some coarse Scotch-Brite and then I'm going to work down to some finer Scotch-Brite, shine it all up. Yeah, that's looking pretty. So switching out my collet chuck, I'm going to get some half inch brass in here for the nut that will tighten down onto the collet end there. One of my tricks for drilling hole depths is to mark it with one of these markers here. Um, the tailstock on my machine does have a DRO, but it's not working right now, and I haven't gotten around to fixing it. 
and this is a, not a critical depth that I need here, so I can just go to that yellow mark, and that's quite good enough. This is the quarter inch hole that the, is wide at the same width as the X-Acto blade, and now I'm using the centering drill to put a taper in the very bottom of that hole. And I'm going to bore it out for the thread diameter that I'm going to use the Oh, yes, I've got to clear this, clean this out a little bit with a chamfer first to help the bottoming tap that I'm going to use go in there. So this is the uh, 3 8 by 32 tap. Getting it set up in my tap guide. Put a little 30 weight oil in there just to get it going. And I've got a wrench on that end and a Tommy bar on the chuck end. And just work my way in. Driving it out with the motor just comes out a lot quicker that way. So now I'm checking to see how far the body goes into this uh, nut, if you will. So I'm marking it and once again holding it up so I can scribe the depth that I need there. And back to the knurling tool so I can knurl the whole nut part, make it easier to grip and tighten. A little 30 weight oil doesn't hurt. So I'm going to take that out, have a look. Yep. Now what I need to do is measure how deep the hole is all the way through to the quarter inch hole, which is way back in there. Now I know where to part this off. So I've got it flipped around in the uh, collet chuck and here we go, parting it off. Because parting is such sweet sorrow. There she goes. So I've got a little extra room there now, I'm going to remove a little bit more just to allow the uh, X-Acto blade to penetrate into the chuck better. You can see that works pretty well now. Cut a bevel on there and then I'll round that off a little bit. So I'm using my round nose cutter uh, to just fuss it around a little bit and get it more to a radius and then I can finish that out with a uh, file. There we go. A little emery paper, a little scotch bright, and that's done. So here it is. The slot I cut on the milling machine, uh, I didn't show that, pretty self-evident. And the blade fits in there just perfectly. <laughs>